director of TRIA, Vet Cooper. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. A record 45,000 people crossed the Channel on dangerous small boats last year, up from just 280 four years ago. In that short time, the Government has allowed criminal gangs to take hold along the Channel and along our border. At the same time, convictions of people smugglers have halved. Home Office asylum decisions have collapsed down 40%. The backlog and costly, inappropriate hotel use has soared. Removals of unsuccessful asylum seekers are down 80% on the last Labour government. And legal family reunion visas for refugees are down 40%. This is deeply damaging chaos. And there is no point in ministers trying to blame anyone else for it. They have been in power for 13 years. The asylum system is broken, and they broke it. We need serious action to stop dangerous boat crossings, which are putting lives at risk and undermining border security. And that is why Labour has put forward plans for a cross-border police unit for fast-track decisions and returns to clear the backlog and end hotel use and a new agreement with France and other countries. But instead, today's statement is Groundhog Day. The Home Secretary has said anyone who arrives illegally will be deemed inadmissible and either returned to the country they arrive from or a safe third country. Only that wasn't this Home Secretary. It was the last one. And that wasn't this bill. It was the last one. Passed only a year ago, which did not work. And as part of last year's bill, the Home Office considered 18,000 people as inadmissible for the asylum system because they had travelled through safe third countries, but because they had no return agreements in place, just 21 of them were returned. That is 0.1%. The other 99.9% just carried on, often in hotels, at an extra cost of £500 million, and it didn't deter anyone. Even more boats arrived. So what is different this time? They still don't have any return agreements in place. The Home Secretary herself has admitted Rwanda is failing, and even if it gets going, it will only take a few hundred people. So what will happen to the other 99% of people under this bill? Now, she says she's going to detain them all, maybe for 28 days. She could tell us how many detention centres they will need and how much that will cost. But even if she does, what will happen when people leave 28-day detention? Will she make people destitute, so they just wander the streets in total chaos, torture victims, Afghan interpreters, families with children, or will she put them into indefinite taxpayer-funded accommodation? Never returned anywhere because they don't have the agreements with Europe in place, neither returned nor given sanctuary, never having their case resolved. Just forever, in asylum accommodation and hotels, she may not call it the asylum system, but thousands more people are still going to be in it nevertheless. And what does it mean for the promises that we made to the Afghan interpreters who served our country, but who were too late to make the last flight out of Kabul as the tyranny was closing in on them? The government told them to flee and find another way here, and they told us to tell people that as well. But the resettlement scheme isn't helping them, and if they arrive in this country finally this afternoon, perhaps by travelling through Ireland to get here, they will only ever be illegal in the eyes of the government who relied on the sacrifices they made for us. So if the government was serious, it would be working internationally to get a proper new agreement in place with France and Europe, including return agreements, and properly controlled and managed legal routes such as family reunion and reform of resettlement. Instead, this bill makes this harder, unilaterally choosing to decide no asylum cases at all, but expecting every other country to carry on. And they would work with Labour on our plan for a major new cross-border police unit to go after the criminal gangs. But instead, 
the Deputy Chair of the Conservative Party said yesterday we shouldn't go after the gangs because, well, they've existed for thousands of years. That is the disgraceful Tory attitude that's let the gangs off the hook and letting the gangs take hold. And one smuggler told Sky News yesterday that three quarters of the smugglers live in Britain, yet barely any of them are being prosecuted, and they still haven't found the hundreds of children missing from asylum hotels who've been picked up by criminal gangs. They could be setting out a serious plan today, and we would work with them on it, and so would everyone across the country. Instead, it's just more chaos. They say no ifs, no buts, but all of us know they're going to spend the whole of the next year ifing and butting and looking for someone else to blame. When it all goes wrong, enough is enough. We can't afford any more of this slogans and not solutions, just government by gimmick, ramping up the rhetoric on refugees but picking fights simply to have someone else to blame when things go wrong. This bill isn't a solution. It is a con that risks making the chaos worse. Britain deserves better than this chaos. Britain is better than this. Mr Speaker, I thank the Right Honourable Lady for her remarks, but forgive me, after five minutes of hysteria, histrionics and criticism, I'm still... I've just got no idea what Labour's plan is. I'll assume assume the Shadow Home Secretary is still committed to scrapping our Rwanda partnership, as she said last year. I'll assume that the Leader of the Opposition still wants to close immigration removal centres, as he promised during his leadership campaign. Shadow Home Secretary talks about safe and legal routes. I I wonder what number uh, they would cap that at. 500,000? A million? Five million? She should be honest with this House and with the British people. What she really means is unlimited safe and legal routes. Open borders by the back door. She says get serious. Well, let's look at the facts. Mr Speaker, the British people want to stop the boats. It's one of the five promises that the Prime Minister made to the British people. But stop the boats didn't even feature in the Leader of the Opposition's five big missions. It's because he probably doesn't care, or is it because he doesn't care, or because he doesn't know what to do? We all know why. And I think the British people know why. It's because deep down, the Leader of the Opposition doesn't want to stop the boats. He thinks it's bigoted to say that we've got too much illegal migration abusing our system. It's because Labour MPs would prefer to write letters stopping the removal of foreign national offenders. vote against our measures to penalise foreign national offenders, to streamline our asylum system. Those are the facts, Mr Speaker. Labour are against deterring people who would come here illegally. They are against detaining people who do come here illegally. And they are against deporting people who are here illegally. That means, Mr Speaker, that they are for this situation getting worse and worse. Perhaps that's fine. Perhaps that's fine. Perhaps that's fine for the Leader of the uh, Opposition and most of the Labour front bench. But it's not their schools. It's not their GPs. It's not for their public services, housing and hotels filling up with illegal migrants. Perhaps that's why, even before seeing this bill and engaging on the substance, Labour has already said that it wouldn't support its passage through Parliament. Is the Leader of the Opposition committing that the Labour Lords will block it? The British people want to stop the boats. The Conservative government has a plan to stop the boats. This Prime Minister will stop the boats. And if the people want closed mines and open borders, then they can rely on Labour.